In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your metal materials look insanely real inside Blender without using a single image texture. Most people think you need about five different image maps or grunge maps just to get a decent metal. Truth is, you can get better results just by using procedural nodes and keeping your file fast and clean. I built a full shader with grime, scratches, and zero image files, and it reacts to the light beautifully. I'll walk you through the full setup, step by step, no fluff. My name is Patrick LeVar. I've been learning Blender Octane for the past five years and teaching everything I know about it and giving it away for free. I've also built one of the top Blender Octane communities online where serious artists go to get access to exclusive materials, feedback, and direct support. Enough of the jibber jabber. Let's get into the video. So first thing we're going to start off with is just some fingerprints. I'm going to bring in my asset that I have here that I made just for grunging things up that I've built. School material database six, go to utilities. And we have roughness generator right here. Roughness generator. We'll bring that in. Actually, we're going to bring in the scratch generator also. And I want to make a lint generator. That's my next one. That's probably going to be on the list as a can of making one to generate little flakes of lint. That's probably something I'll do. But first of all, let's go ahead and bring this one into the roughness here. And then I'm also going to bring in a gradient map just to kind of get some more control out of that. All right, right off the bat, that's looking hot. Let's go to size. Let me scale it up to two, maybe five, maybe 10. All right, fogginess. So like we can strip everything back. I even have fingerprints. And these are all procedural. So if you jump inside here and you'll see this, these are all procedural, no images. So you get that high fidelity. Look at that. Nice. I do like that fogginess. I'm gonna bring in some of that fogginess back in grunginess kind of like that patchy noise actually i don't really like the patchy noise we're going to do the patchy noise very subtle start rounding some things off here we're going to go 0.1 patchy subtle we'll take this 2.9 and this one will be 0.3 if you guys are enjoying this video there is a complimentary pdf that comes of summarizes all the stuff that i'm talking about in this video links down below if you guys are interested in that peace fingerprints are looking just a tad bit big maybe something a little bit more smaller well actually i might even really not use well fingerprints i guess we can bring them in very subtly let's go like 0.3 and actually let me go back to 100 and then i'm actually going to make it a little bit more i think the fingerprints are really going to help dictate the size of this thing the scale because if i'm grabbing it and the fingerprint is that big again that fingerprint is also procedural couldn't get it as good as i really wanted to but it gets the job done a little bit. Let's make that probably like 0.2. Very subtle. It's fogginess. I might go a little bit harder on that 0.4. So those other ones are super shiny. We're going completely dirty on this one. All right. I like that where that's at. Scratches. And again, we can control all of that one more time here with the... It's like master control, right? So like just to give us that overall control using the gradient map. And I don't like to have everything pure white. And also, I don't like pure black. Nothing's pure white. I'm just going to keep it light. We'll do the scratches in the bump. If you want to go more deeper, you can put that into the texture displacement. Actually, I might play with it and see what it looks like also in the texture displacement. Let's bring that out. Texture displacement. Because sometimes something's procedural. Some of the procedural stuff, I have to bake it. Actually, yeah, we're not going to do that because I'm going to have to do a banking node, right? Let's just keep it in. Let's keep it light. Not really seeing anything at the moment. Let's jump in here. Gale. There we go. All right, so with this scratch node here, we've got big scratches, and then we've got little scratches, then we've got scale. I'm actually really liking that already. I actually go a little bit, uh, a little bit smaller on the small scale, and then I'm gonna go down to point three, big one, point two. Oh, big one is really too heavy. Let's go point one. I think that's still too big, 0.02. Matter of fact, I think I don't even use big scratches. We're just going to keep it one. And then I got the invert, which we can invert it from, I think it's sticking out. Now it should be in, right? It should, now it looks like it's going in. Let's check it out. I can always, I always forget. White goes in, black goes out. I think that's going in. Same thing here. Let's add a gradient map in there. Now you don't have to use a gradient map. You could use a, also a color correct. I think that's nice. It's subtle. Again, like scratches are not the star of the show. It's going to be kind of like overall just dirt and grind. I think I might just take it up just a little bit. 
0.4. Cool. Now what I want to do is put a layer of dirt on here. Now let's see what will be the best way to do this. I want to do a mixed texture or a mixed material. Second one, we'll just add in a diffuse material. I'm actually just going to make it, I don't know really what color should I do. I should be looking at some reference, just a gray, grayish sit color. And then we'll drop on a, uh, let's check with the curvature node first, curvature texture node. And to see what that's doing, I like to just crank it up to 100. And if you really see, this is what it's doing. This is what the curvature texture node is doing. Go back and invert that back. Actually, we could go invert like this and then uh, let's add in a gradient map node. Flip the gradient map node spread. Let's play with the spread. It's in there, but it's very subtle. Again, I could change the color for right now just to so if you can see what I'm working on. Like that's where it is. It's very subtle. So I guess we're uh let me undo that. I like the color I had before. And then what I want to do, again, we're I would probably I should probably be looking at reference. Tarnish metal. I like these. Yeah, I like these. Just that dirtiness. Even that's not too bad. I actually kind of feel this a little bit more that darkest color inside there huh let's maybe go a little bit more darker pull out some of that red a little bit of saturation a little bit more grayish i wonder if we lean towards more of this blue look in here we notice how it's totally smooth we need to break up that smoothness and the way we break up that smoothness is again let's bring in another roughness generator shift duplicate and then um actually i'm just going to bring in a new one hang on shift du yeah, let's just bring in a new one and then I'm going to go ahead and add that into the roughness map here. There it is kicking in. We don't want the fogginess. We just want probably choose one of these noises here. Uh, really, this noise is so soft on this patchy noise. I like the thin. Yeah, I like this thin one here. It's a little bit more. Oh, this is actually not bad too. Let's get a little bit of that and let's go a little bit heavy on the thin. And then the fog and kind of just use it to soften everything up a little bit. Something like that. Let's see what that looks like. Actually, I can't even see it now. And we can control that using this value here. If we want to soften it up. I wanted to come in just a little bit there. Radius. Let's play with the radius. Oh, we can open up that radius just a tad bit more, huh? Now I think the color is a little bit too much. Let's pull some saturation out of that. All right, I like that. And then let's layer another one on top of this because that's where it all comes in into the layer. Let's set this back to back to where it was. Invert this. So now we're getting it on the outside. We got the inside already. Here's the outside. This one, I'm actually gonna kill that and I'm gonna just go with a noise texture just to get up a different feel. Add a UV transform, add a projection, XYD projecty. Just so I can see, I'm going to get the noise, a little bit more detail in the noise, a little bit more on the octave. Actually, I'm going to change this out for a dirt texture node. Feel that. See what kind we get mix up with the dirt texture node. Crank this up to 10 and let me isolate this so I can see it. Running it through that. Let's set that back to default. There's our dirt texture node. And uh, radius, tolerance, spread, invert that. Oh, it looks like we have some weirdness going on with the normals on this, this actual model that we're using here. Let me reset this back, invert. There we go. I kind of want it to be all over the whole thing. And then we we'll crank that up a little. Let's crank that up to 10. And radius, what happens if we move radius around? Let's see what we got. If you guys are enjoying this video, there is a complimentary PDF that comes of summarizes all the stuff that I'm talking about in this video. Links down below if you guys are interested in that. Peace. Okay, we got way too much going on. I like flipping that. And then still taking some out of it. Like ever just so slightly, just dinginess on top. But I don't want it to be the star of the show. I'm kind of actually feeling this. We're just dirtying it up a little bit. I think the roughness level on this is too much. A little bit more. Like once I get everything where I like it, then I just pull everything back a little bit. I don't want it to be too distracting. 
like I'm still seeing too much detail in the patches. So I'm going to blur that with the foggy noise. And actually I might back these off a little bit. Yeah, it's the grungy noise is just a little bit heavy. I'm going to lighten up that grungy noise just a tad bit. Same thing with this whole thing here. And I still don't like the little, those little grungy detail patch right here. Where's that coming from? It's coming from the other, that's coming from this up here. Oh, so you know what? This is still set to 10. We can back that down like to two, zero, point one, maybe point five. There we go. Okay, now we need to mix these two guys here. What are, this is where I get mixed up. Is it going to be add or is it going to be add? Let's do an add texture first. Here's that. Let me see what that's coming through. That's what we see. And then let's add this. That that cancels each other out. So multiply. Multiply tech. And then there we go. So that multiply gets them both together. And then this dinginess in here is a little bit too heavy. I want to back that down. Make sure we save. Uh, what could we do to lighten that up? Oh, that's this. Yeah, there we go. So we got a little bit of scratches on there, a little bit of dinginess on it. Let me save this. Let's compare this to the, it's very subtle. I like it. I think it's it's very subtle. Probably could add a, a bump node in here with this node here just to also give a little bit of un like we could come in here and maybe go like noise texture plug that in and then i can come through here and do the deal give them both the projection right x zero r scale y and what i'm trying to do with this is yeah, there you can see these the reflection give a little bit of wonkiness like see the reflections or breaking that up a little bit I wouldn't want it to be that strong. So I'll probably pull down my contrast back to like 10, but just kind of giving a little bit of unevenness to the reflection. So it's not so perfect. What do we do? Multiply, multiply texture. Mm, I don't see the scratches this time. And there's my scratches. There's one. And then if I add the other one in here, okay, yeah, it's, they're working. So look, we're just breaking up uh, that light reflection a little bit. And we still got our small little scratches there. Look, it looks like I lost the, the grime there. Oh. Cause it's not completely hooked up. There we go. Now I still feel like we're missing our, our other paint grime. I just went too much too light. There we go. Yeah. I want to see a little bit of tarnish there. All right. I think that's pretty nice, pretty subtle. And if we really wanted to, we could add a little bit of fingerprints in there. Oh, we do have a little fingerprints in there, right? Now I prefer to use these procedural. So they're, they're not going to be like dependent on resolution. Because when everything's procedural, like you got unlimited resolution. All right, now I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. This whole setup here. And typically what I would do if I was going to keep stacking them on, I would just take this whole rig, copy, paste it, and then change it up. Like, like if you do a rust, I have a little bit of rust going on or something like that. But in this one, I'm not going to add any rust. I think I'm just going to do a completely clean one and a dirty one. And then later on, I might come back and do a rust one and get more detailed and, and um We'll see. But for now, I think this is cool because I'm going to take this whole setup here, copy paste it to everything. Actually, let's grab this one too because I'm going to copy paste this to all the other metals. If you guys want to watch more of these videos down below, check the link for my Blender Octane course. It's in my Blender Octane community. There you can get immediate access. And for the next seven days, I'll knock five bucks off. So jump on that, get in there, finish watching some more of these videos and get access to the newest videos as soon as they are finished cooking from me. Patrick LeVar, catch you guys in the next one. Take a look at this video. Peace.